Hi guys, we have made it to Saturday morning, October 26, 2013, and this is your old conspiracy factist, conspiracy factist, ham bone little tail. I, this is no joke, I am on my way to a panel discussion about the JFK assassination, so I don't have uh, time for a long rant. I have, uh, I, I, I am caught in the crossfire between two of my lovable friends. Uh, on one hand, I've got one of my friends screaming at me about what an absolute conspiracy theorist, wacko, whatnot. Uh, I, I got that coming in one ear, and then in the other ear, I have another friend screaming at me that I am a narrow-minded uh blankety blank and that i need to open my mind so I I here i go what what is a conspiracy factist to do uh caught between their tin foil hat wearing friends and their clueless moron friends when when, when you love both of them anyway so i thought this little rant here uh, should get me in more hot water with both of them. Uh, certainly the one accusing me of being a conspiracy wacko. Okay. This one is my latest chemtrail. Chemtrail, I am one of these uh, conspiracy factists who understand that chemtrails are real. I personally think, or have always thought up until possibly this article right here in the mainstream media on Yahoo News Today from Live Science Magazine, might change my opinion a little bit. I have always assumed chemtrails were to fight global warming. It just makes absolute perfect sense. I'm still standing by, beside that. But this one is for people who do not believe that chemtrails are real. And it's easy to find out what is in these things, guys. For years, uh, these conspiracy theory wackos have been going and scooping this stuff up. The major ingredient in chemtrails is aluminum is these uh, little aluminum particles that combine with silica particles blah 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 i've been over this there there's a million uh youtubes out there what are they spraying now the why while we're having that argument most people aren't even having so this article in the mainstream media explains what they are spraying and who they are spraying it and here here is the uh, smoking gun this is direct evidence from the mainstream media for anyone to read the US military admitting on the record that they are spraying aluminum all over the skies of this country. For anyone who does not want to believe this dumb hippie, let's look at LiveScience.com uh, from October 25th, 2013. Mystery radar blob reveals odd man-made phenomenon. Okay. On June 4th, meteorologists in Huntsville, Alabama noticed a blob on their radar screen that looked like a strong thunderstorm despite the fact the sun was shining and not a drop of rain could be found within a few hundred miles. After some sleuthing and several wacky explanations, the scientists have identified the culprit. Which, as we'll see in a minute, the culprit is the U.S. military spraying chemtrails around the sky. 
But let's continue with the story. Quote, our operational meteorologist spotted it on radar immediately and initially thought he was caught off guard by a pop-up thunderstorm that wasn't in the forecast. This is some, uh, some Matthew Haven, basically a glorified uh, meteorologist. Okay. Soon after that point, we had numerous people from around Huntsville and even other meteorologists from other states calling and emailing us trying to determine what was going on. Huh, what was going on? And some of the theories put forth to explain the mysterious blobs were doozies. And I love this one. From the conspiracy theory, the conspiracy theory that it was the result of a top-secret ground-based transmitter, uh, they're talking about HARP, H-A-A-R-P. I have had uh, rants about HARP. I do not think chemtrails are related to HARP. So they laugh about all these wacko conspiracy theorists talking about harp and some woman talking about some cloud of ladybugs and you got to uh, go wade through all of this shit to get to, as you do so often in the mainstream media, you need to jump towards the bottom of the article. Okay, continuing with the article, when the team looked at the blob using standard weather radar, all indications were it was a strong thunderstorm, blah, 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 and so they continued to dig deeper, and they found the blob was not nature-made after all, and was likely so-called military chaff or chafe. C-H-A-F-F. -F. I've heard that word pronounced chaff or chafe. Okay, anyway, that's not the important thing. They found it was, uh, it was military chafe or reflective particles used to test military radar. Okay, quote, what we were able to see from this dual pole radar data looked similar to military chafe cases previously. Okay. We have to dissect that. Military chafe cases previously. So this is not the first time. This has been mentioned on these other chemtrail uh, wacko videos where these local weathermen are, are pointing to these things. And, and this weatherman, I think he ended up getting fired later, saying this is not thunderstorms, guys. This is military aircraft doing this. This is one of the famous scenes. So here we have the mainstream media admitting that this military chafe, it, it goes on all the time. The, the primary difference was that the winds weren't blowing the stuff away. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So the chafe was basically pluming outward pluming outward over a good portion of the Huntsville metro area. Are you following me, guys? This is not, literally, not rocket science. This is LiveScience.com. We have the U.S. military going up there, spraying this shit. They've done it before. They were doing it on June 4th. They are still doing this. And what happens? This stuff plumes outward. When you are looking at these chemtrails, they plume outward. Eventually, they cover the whole sky. In fact, the chafe was visible on their radar for more than nine hours. 
and uh, anybody who wants to take the time to do time-lapse photographs of chem trails, whatever the, the real reason they're spraying these shit, uh, we'll see that they will last more than nine hours. Okay, and now the final, uh, not the final sentence, but where the old chem trail conspiracy theorist becomes a chemtrail conspiracy factist. Quote, officially, it, uh, officially, okay, this isn't some off-the-record whatever, uh, you know, some guy with a disguised voice. This is the official admission from Redstone Arsenal. Redstone Arsenal. I don't even want to know who they are. Officially, Redstone Arsenal disclosed that it was a military test using RR-188 military chafe, Haven said, referring, referring to aircraft used to spread a cloud of aluminum coated silica in the case of RR-188. Do we need to repeat this, guys? This is the official disclosure from Redstone Arsenal referring to their aircraft used to spread a cloud of aluminum coated silica where do you think all of this aluminum is going? And, and there's also, uh, in this stuff, uh, in these chemtrails, the other two main ingredients are barium and, to a lesser degree, strontium. And, and you better believe, if Redstone Arsenal is now officially disclosing that they are using aircraft to spread clouds of aluminum that linger in the atmosphere for nine hours. When are you people denying chemtrails? Gonna pull your head out of your ass this is what this is the this is why I am a conspiracy factist. I am not 100% sure about chemtrails being uh, used to fight global warming. I'm still 99%. All this tells me is that there's more than one use for spraying clouds for the U.S. military and people like Redstone Arsenal spraying our skies with chemicals. You know, you don't need to go to Alex Jones anymore to see this shit, guys. You need to go to Yahoo News. But anyway, I need to wrap this up because your old conspiracy factist needs to head off to a JFK assassination panel hearing. And maybe I'll stop by and get a, uh, what, what do you think, guys? Should I get a, a, a job at the IRS while I'm uh, out investigating the JFK assassination? I need to get out of here. I hope this has helped some of you understand that chemtrails are real. Bye, guys.